Hi, I'm Wyatt Cash, Vice President for Content Strategy at FedScoop, and we're here at the ACT IAC Executive Leadership Conference in Williamsburg. And joining me uh, is Richard McKinney, uh, the CIO for the Department of Transportation. Richard, thank you for being with us. Appreciate be, you taking the time. So, some of the themes that we've been talking about at this conference have to do with um, emerging technologies, mm -hmm. uh, innovation, security. Um, tell us a little bit about either what you're hearing or what you're doing in the way of emerging technologies and how that's helping the Department of Transportation either provide better services or maybe reduce risks, as the case may be. Right. Well, there's an awful lot going on, as you can well imagine, in the, in the field of transportation around emerging technologies. I mean, you have the whole car thing, whether it's mm -hmm. connected vehicles or, you know, that's sort of one approach that we're doing on the automotive front, then there's the driverless car. Mm -hmm. and so we have those two sort of parallel but different tracks on uh, how you apply technology to cars, you know. There's the issues around, you know, positive train control for trains. There's obviously the whole next gen uh, a push in the FAA mm -hmm. around the, the next generation of uh, aviation technology mm -hmm. and uh, there's just a, a tremendous amount of uh, emerging technology on all fronts. Mm -hmm. So one of the issues uh, oftentimes is in this uh, era where budgets and funding have not been uh, what one might hope when you're trying yeah. to introduce new t technologies mm -hmm. and have a good business case. Uh, yeah. How are you dealing with that? Well, you know, budget's always a struggle. You know, the, the thing that I've been trying to focus on around, in, in, at least in the information technology side of the house, is I'm, I'm trying to have a, a conversation with the department about, you know, how we do commodity IT mm -hmm. and how we can uh, do things more in an enterprise shared service environment mm -hmm. and, and lower the cost of that part of the stack. You know, which could be, you know, depending how you measure, 60, 70 percent of the IT stack, in, in hopes of that we could take some of those savings, assuming we're in flat budget times, take some of those savings and apply that uh, to the mission IT portion that rides on top of that stack. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to make my our budget go further just by uh, uh, you know, a good conversation around uh, IT consolidation, enterprise shared services. Mm -hmm. So another theme at the conference has to do with Fatara and yeah. are we getting more traction this time around than we did uh, with the sort of post Klinger Cohen Act era. What are you sensing? Uh, are, are, do you feel like you have more um, management exercise and control? Yeah, I, I do. I, I think Fatara is, is extremely important. I mm -hmm. applaud Congress. I think it was a very wise move on their part. Uh, I think they recognize that uh, the accountability that a CIO should, you know, the things they should be held accountable for had to be matched by the authority that they have, that they had, those had to balance out. And I think Fatara was a sincere effort to find that balance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am approaching it with deadly seriousness mm -hmm. and trying um, my dead level best to get it implemented in the department and, uh, and have it work towards what I was just talking about. I mean, the whole move to an enterprise shared service. Uh, there's a certain amount of of uh, uh, you know, authority needed to, to be able to pull that off. You know, uh, the uh, status quo has a lot of inertia, mm -hmm. and I think Fatara comes along in a time when we really need uh, that boost. And I think my fellow CIOs and I recognize that this is our time, mm -hmm. that uh, we've been entrusted with this legislation and this new authority, and uh, we need to do our dead level best to make sure that uh, uh, it's properly implemented. Mm -hmm. I'm working hard at that. Good. I want to touch on security briefly and, sure. uh, you know, uh, talk a little bit about the what agencies and what you and the department learned about from the 30-day sprint where we were trying to uh, implement uh, uh, PIV and right. two-factor authentication systems. What, right. did, what did you learn through that process and uh, uh, what is still left to do? Well, I, I'll break it into it's, it's several of its components. So around the, the smart card, PIV card implementation, uh, the good news at DOT is that we were sort of on a track to, uh, to, to fully implement uh, smart authentication, but 
when the when the metrics came out of being a hundred percent privileged user and seventy five percent unprivileged user, we really had to step on the gas. But we had a plan in place, so it wasn't like we all we really had to do is accelerate the mm -hmm. uh, the implementation of that plan, and we were able to do it. We got to a hundred percent of privileged and ninety seven percent of unprivileged. The three percent is primarily the employees that are very remote, mm -hmm. maybe work out of their home, and you know far far from an office and. We're trying to figure out if we make their uh, machine, you know, the only way you can boot the machine is with a PIV card and something would happen to their PIV card. Where does that leave that worker that has to mm -hmm. jump in their car and drive 500 miles to have a, you know, a, a card authenticated? So we're working through those remaining issues. The, the other part of the sprint, you know, I think the, the part that, uh, uh, that, I, that I see has the most long-term value, I mean, obviously the PIV card is very, very important and the privilege, you know, all that very important um, is identifying our high value assets because mm -hmm. increasingly in uh, our world we were recognizing that you do all that stuff well that, that uh, security hygiene the piv card and the you know prim you know you know, perimeter detection, and you do all that s stuff right, but then you almost have to begin with the assumption that somehow somebody's gotten in, mm -hmm. you know, through some crack, you know, right. and that it's incumbent upon us then to look through our, you know, all of our assets and to, and to determine which are the ones that we just could not and would not mm -hmm. ever want compromise, and then spend more time and more energy and more money guarding those high value assets. So that, cy that cyber sprint, um, the first stage of that was that all of us had to identify what those high value assets are. And I think there's more to come, because I think we're going to have more sprints. I think this is more like a marathon, and I mm -hmm. think we're headed into the latter, you know, the next stage of, of that effort. And I think a lot of it's going to be centered around high value assets. Mm -hmm. So last question, um, yeah. what are a couple of projects you're working on uh, that you're most excited about? Well, you know, I, I think I'd have to go back to what I said before. I, I'm really excited about having the opportunity to uh, stand up a, a, a true sh enterprise shared services model that meets the commodity IT needs of the various operating administrations, and uh, it, it's it's a heavy lift. It's a uh, but it's exciting for me because it's so foundational. It's so important. Uh, that we get that right, mm. you know, because everything we want to do has to ride on that foundation, and and I and so putting a lot of attention, a lot of work in it. I'm getting buy-in. I put together a great team of people. I think the thing that most excites me at work are the people that I surround have surrounded myself with. I'm I have a great team. They're a joy to work with, and they have a lot of enthusiasm, and they're they're helping me tackle. They're helping the department tackle these issues, and they're doing it in a way that's really earning the trust and support of the entire department. I appreciate that. Wish you well, and I know you're doing a lot of good things. We'll look forward to continuing to hear how that goes. So, thank you. Well, thanks good for being be with, with us. You. Okay, All thank right. you. I'm Wyatt Cash with FedScoop. For more coverage like this, uh, join us at fedscoop.com. Thanks for being with us.